Hi, my name's Tessa Benum, and I'm an Olympic and world champion hockey player for Team Canada. When it comes to hockey, nothing beats the excitement of a game in full play. Like you, I always wear my hockey helmet to protect my head. But did you know that's not enough to protect your brain from a concussion? Think First Canada is a national charity working to reduce brain and spinal cord injuries for children and youth. It develops educational programs like this Think First Hockey video with educational teams, medical experts and researchers. And most importantly, Think First Canada empowers kids and those who care for them to think first and to prevent injury. In this Think First video, we'll show you what's dangerous on the ice. And we'll talk to some of your favorite hockey superstars. They'll have some quick tips to show you how to keep the most important part of your body, your brain, safer every time. Most of us have grown up watching cartoon characters getting bonked on the head. But in real life, feeling dazed isn't funny. It's a symptom of a concussion. There's lots of ways to hurt your head and get a concussion. Car collisions, a fall down the stairs, or even from playing sports like hockey, football, and soccer. I do believe players, uh, no concussions are there, and it uh, you know can be a scary uh, uh, sort of injury. Well, it's obviously not uh, not a great feeling at all, and um, you know you, at first you you don't know what's going on, you don't know what uh, what really happened. Mistakes happen, accidents happen, and. Um, all it takes is a little fall to bump your head and uh, your life comes to a screeching halt. Any head injury is uh, you know, probably the most talked about injury uh, in hockey and um, they're, they're trying to really figure out on uh, how to really limit uh, those head injuries. Hockey is one of the world's fastest and most exciting games. It takes speed, skill and teamwork. There's nothing better than a rush to score a goal. But every year, thousands of people get serious concussions playing this sport in amateur and professional leagues. In Canada, there are around 500,000 kids in minor league hockey alone. And while there may be broken bones or sprained ankles, the most dangerous injury is a brain injury. The brain is the most complex and wonderful organ in your body. It controls everything. Every thought or feeling you've ever had has come from here. We can't see our brain, so when it gets hurt, the injury is often invisible. So what's happening when the brain gets hurt? Hockey players can hit the boards at high speeds. Your head may stop suddenly, but your brain keeps moving inside. What happens after a blow to the head or a blow to the body is that the brain actually moves inside the skull. It can be back and forth movement, it can be side to side movement, or it can be angular movement or rotational movement. And that disturbs the cells within the brain and causes some loss of mental functioning. The problem is that if you get a concussion, you may not recognize the symptoms. At the time, you may feel just dizzy, confused, or nauseous, or like your bell was rung. There are many signs and symptoms of a concussion. First, the kid may lose consciousness, or may be confused or dazed. Some kids say, oh, I saw stars, or I got dinged. All of those are symptoms of concussion. Dr. Charles Tatter has treated many amateur and professional athletes over the years for concussions. But the worst he's seen are in children. And he recently met a teenager who had one. Molly, a goalie. She got her first concussion about two years ago. One of her friends stepped over the blue line and took a slap shot, hitting her in the face, denting her helmet. And what symptoms did you have after that first concussion? Well, right away, I sort of felt I was confused and I was like 
wow, what just happened? Um, when I got off the ice after the session, I, I was sort of okay for a couple of minutes, and then I bent down to undo my pads, and I threw up. I was nauseous, and I, I called my mom, and I said, there, something happened. I'm not sure what, but I'm throwing up, and I can't think. But concussions aren't just a problem among kids who play minor league hockey. In 2007, NHL star Patrice Bergeron suffered a concussion. I lost uh, conscious, uh, consciousness when I, when I got my, my first concussion, so obviously uh, uh, the doctors and the trainers and all that took uh, good care of me. Bergeron had to sit out 60 games, almost an entire season. I was out of it. I, was, um, I couldn't, couldn't do anything, to be honest with you. I was just, all, I, all I could do is you know, close my eyes and just, that's all I could do. I couldn't really, I didn't know what actually what really happened, what really took place. Uh, uh, that day, so uh, for me it was it was obvious that I had a concussion, uh, and uh, I didn't feel like uh, playing or doing anything at all. A concussion is called an invisible injury because we don't see anything. There's no bruising on the head. Uh, there's no broken bone that we can see. So in that sense, it's invisible. Meet Robert. Today he banged his head hard when he slammed into the boards. He felt kind of weird afterwards, but kept on playing. He didn't recognize that he had a concussion or tell anyone how he really felt. Should Robert have kept on playing? Any persisting symptoms like headache, nausea, dizziness, anything like that should be a sign not to return to play. Anyone showing symptoms of a concussion needs to be taken off the ice right away. Continuing to play or practice increases the risk of more severe problems. It can take longer to get better, increase the risk of another injury, and can be dangerous. How are you feeling? It was thought before that the only way to get a concussion is if you actually passed out, but now we know for a fact that you don't need to get that level of uh, symptom. You can have concussions simply from, you know, not feeling well, a little bit dizzy and headaches. After the game, though, Robert felt pretty sick. When the brain gets hurt, you'll feel one or many of these symptoms. Confusion, headaches, loss of balance, nausea, blurred vision, ringing in the ears, slurred speech. Emotional and personality changes like feeling sad or moody. Dizziness. Stunned or dazed. Loss of consciousness. And memory loss. Remember, you don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion. Even if you only have one of these symptoms, you might still have a concussion. Tell your coach, your trainer, and your parents immediately. When we see a player that we knew had a big collision on the ice and maybe suffered a head injury, it's really important that we talk to that person right away when they come back to the bench. And with our medical staff, we make sure that our, our physiotherapist uh, go see that player right away. If you suspect a player has a concussion, then you should take them off the ice and do the following. Ask them questions to see if they are thinking clearly, such as what team are we playing? Look for changes in personality, such as any unusual emotional behavior. And look for changes in their physical capabilities, such as balance and hand-eye coordination. If there is any doubt that a player has a concussion, play it safe and get them off the ice for the rest of the game. Then, it's important to get them to a doctor. The first thing to do is to actually identify the problem and to tell someone. So the last thing you want to do is hide it or not tell anyone. So you want to tell your coach or your players. And the very first action to be taken is to stop play. So you have to get off the ice. And if it's a game or a practice, you have to get off and be assessed properly. So what sorts of play can cause head injuries? Head injuries can happen during a sudden fall on the ice, hits to the head, face, and neck, Concussions can also be caused by players colliding or when players get checked or hit into the boards. 
So what can we do to protect our brains? Tessa Banam won a gold medal at the Olympics with Team Canada and has a physical education degree in coaching and sports. Now that you know what a concussion is, I want to show you some quick tips on how to play safe. Follow me. The first quick tip is to be a good skater. Work on your balance and your agility skating both forwards and backwards. Work on your tight turns, your crossovers, and your pivots. The next quick tip is stick handling with your head up. This helps you see the play develop in front of you and lets you know where all your teammates are. So here we go, guys, let's try it out. That's it, good work. The next quick tip is be aware and stay alert. Always know where you are when you're out on the ice, whether you're near the boards or the front of the net. Know where your teammates and opponents are by keeping your head on a swivel out there. And just when you think you're out of the play, and you stop paying attention, that's when you're at the highest risk of getting hurt. Get your arms up when going into the boards. Use your hands and arms as shock absorbers. Always approach the boards at an angle. Don't go straight at the boards. If you trip or get hit from behind, you risk a spinal cord or brain injury. Come in on an angle so your shoulder hits first instead of your head. The next quick tip is know the danger zone. This is three to four feet away from the boards. You want to stand closer so that when you get hit, you're squeezed into the boards as opposed to being thrusted. So Marcus, why don't you come up here and show us where you think is safe? All right, Marcus, this is a little bit far away, because if I were to hit you, your head and your neck would hit this part of the boards. So if you stand a bit closer and I hit you, you get squeezed into the boards as opposed to thrusted. Concussions aren't like other injuries. You can't suck it up and try to push through them. That will make you worse, and it will take longer to get better. So we've learned some ways to reduce your risk of concussion. But what happens if you already have one? The first thing you need to do is to see a doctor who has experience with concussions. After a concussion, the only real treatment is rest. And by that we mean both physical and mental rest. So no video games, no homework right after a concussion. You need to rest your brain. Especially as an athlete, you know, you always want to get going. You always want to play and, and perform. And once you, you can't and you're forced to, you know, stay in bed or stay at home, it's pretty hard mentally, actually. So it, it was tough and I had to take the time. But uh, all the advices that I, that I got were to rest first and foremost, but also really um, think about myself first and, and don't worry about anything else. Well, one of the important things that we've discovered about concussions is that the effects are cumulative, which means that pretty well everybody gets over the first concussion. But after three or four, then the likelihood of recovering fully goes down. And furthermore, that it, it takes longer to recover after subsequent concussions. And that's what happened to Molly. My second concussion, I was in a butterfly position, so I was on my knees, and the puck sort of was flipped towards me. And I guess the girl on the other team was swinging to, it sort of looked like a baseball swing, actually, to get the puck. And she missed the puck and whacked me across the head. And she, I guess my helmet wasn't on properly. I wasn't wearing um, a proper fitting helmet. So that was uh, not helpful. Concussions can have mental repercussions that last for months. Doing homework may be harder. I also had troubles with math for about six months after my second concussion. Can you sort of explain why that was going on? Well, math is a very complex process. To be able to do math, a large part of your brain has to be working. You have to be able to see properly. You have to be able to remember properly. And each time you make a calculation, you're using an enormous part of the brain. 
So it's not really surprising that math was a big problem for you. After you've seen a doctor, you may begin these internationally recognized six steps to return to play. The first step is rest. That means no mental or physical exertion until symptom free. No video games, no homework. Step two, light activity. Get your heart going, such as walking or stationary cycling. Step three, at this point, you can get back into sports activity, like skating. Step four, you can do hockey drills, but with no risk of body contact. And as long as no symptoms return, you can do some more weight training. After step four, you should see a doctor again before going to step five. If your doctor says it's okay, you can begin normal practice drills. If you have no more symptoms, it should be okay for step six, back into the game. Each stage should take a minimum of one day, but it may take many days to progress through each step, especially if the concussion is severe. Until your symptoms go away with rest, you cannot proceed to the next step. And if at any time symptoms reappear, you must rest until symptom free, then go back to the previous step where you had no symptoms. I was out of training for a good six, six months, so uh, I lost 15 pounds, you know. Uh, um, my, my strength wasn't where I, I needed to be. Obviously the first thing was to try to get on the, on the bike and try to ride for five minutes and see if I, I get any symptoms doing that just by activating my, uh, my body a little bit and see if, my, if I get headaches so with my heart rate uh, going higher. So we just kept you know, improving each and every day uh, until we, I, I was symptom free. So it took me a, a long time just to get that, uh, that strength and that, that way back. If you come back from a head injury and it's, uh, it's too early and you're not at 100%, you put yourself in a more vulnerable position to be hurt again, you know, and you're probably not playing to your best ability. You know, in the long run, that's going to hurt the team. Uh, you know, my dad was a big part of telling me, you got to take care of your body off the ice just as much as you do on. And, um, you know, he, now that I've grown up and I've kind of looked back, he was right. <laughs> Many concussions heal with proper rest in 10 days or so, but a second injury to your brain, even if it seems like a minor blow, can cause more serious symptoms, which can last longer and can be dangerous. Although helmets don't prevent concussions, here are a few more ways to think first before you get on the ice. There are a few neck exercises you can do alone or with your friend um, in order to minimize whiplash. So that's your head coming back, which would happen to me, um, forcing your head to hit the ground, which makes your brain shake and, and has a concussion. So um, to do this, basically, you're working all angles of your neck. So you'll start with your hand on the side of your face, and you're going to push to the side and hold it for approximately six seconds. Um, if you have a friend or a partner helping you, they can have their hand on the side of your face, and you're they're going to put a little bit of resistance, and you're going to turn your head and then let it go, and then turn your head, and then let it go. And you're gonna do this for all directions. So forward, they're gonna have their hand on your forehead, and you're gonna push down. If you're by yourself, hold it for six seconds, and repeat this with your friend. Again, have them do resistance, and back. You can do it at the back of your head, and of course, repeat the other side. Caroline Wallette plays for the Canadian Women's Hockey League. She has won four world championships and three Olympic gold medals. She knows what she's talking about when she explains the proper way to wear a helmet. So when I'm ready to put my helmet, I want to make sure that the straps are on the side. So I, I put it on and I want to do up the strap and make sure that it's securely fastened. And then I have to make sure that I have one finger underneath my chin and the strap so that the helmet doesn't move. So it should feel pretty tight, but not too tight that it is uncomfortable. And after I, I want to do the cage, make sure that my chin is right where the chin protector is. And I will tie both sides, very important, and that it's going to be nice and tight adjusted to my body. So remember, it's important to make sure your helmet fits you properly. Go to a professional hockey equipment store and get expert advice on getting the best helmet with the best fit. And now, 
Our superstars will show you the next set of tips, which will cover how to avoid causing a concussion. Welcome back. In this next segment, we're gonna show you how to avoid giving your opponents concussions. But in order to do that, I need a friend. Hi guys, I'm John Tavares, and I'm here to tell you do not check from behind. So for example, you do not ever wanna put your stick across somebody's back and push them from behind, as it can cause injury to their head or to their neck. Same thing with your hands. So anytime you see somebody's number or the back of their head to you, you wanna avoid body contact. Some leagues don't even allow body contact now, so make sure you guys are following the rules. Guys, don't ever hit somebody in the head. Always use shoulder to shoulder contact when finishing a check. You okay, Connor? I thought so. Also, never use your elbows, hands, or stick to hit somebody. This next tip is called control your stick responsibly. Anytime you have your stick up by someone's head or neck, it can cause serious injury. It's your responsibility to control your stick. The next tip to avoid getting your teammates hurt is do not make suicide passes. When receiving a suicide pass, my attention is focused on where the puck's coming from, not from getting body checked from a big guy like Christian. When you get hit unexpectedly like Christian just hit me, it can cause serious injury because your body is not prepared to take a body check. This next tip is called communicate with your teammates. Talk to your teammates on the ice so you can help them be safe, especially when they're not aware of what's going on. Give them a heads up. This last tip is think first. Respect everyone on the ice. Anytime you step on the ice, make sure you respect yourself, especially your head and spinal cord. And be sure to treat your teammates and opponents with the same respect that you want to be treated with, both on and off the ice. So this sound good to you guys? Yeah. Let's go play some hockey. Respect should be a priority for everyone, not just the kids. Coaches, trainers, parents, and referees all set the tone for a safe game played by the rules. It's up to everyone to look for the warning signs of head injuries. If you suspect a child has a concussion, the first thing is to remove them from play, then have them checked out by a doctor. It's not safe to return to play until their concussion symptoms are completely gone at rest. Then, go through the stepwise return to play process and get the child cleared to play by their doctor. So think first. You can help prevent concussions and other serious injuries. Show respect and no hits to the head. You want to have that fine balance of, of being respectful, having that respect back, and, and always having that competitive nature to do well and, and to compete. But uh, always first and foremost growing up, you want to make sure you're safe and healthy. I think kids often say, yeah, I have a concussion, I have a headache, I'm going to play anyway. And from experience, that was the worst decision I ever made. It put me back six months with my school and my friends, and I was a mess. I was absolutely a mess. And if anybody um, who sees this has a concussion, don't play. It's, it's really not smart. Um, in the long run, you're going to grow to regret it. We have to reduce hits to the head. We have to reduce hitting from behind, especially into the boards. And we can drastically reduce the number of concussions in hockey by people respecting their own brains and respecting the brains of their opponents. So let's continue to enjoy this amazing sport for life. And remember to think first. <laughs>